Hello and welcome to PocketGamer.biz's monetizer video feature. This is where we play the first five minutes or so of um, new free-to-play games um, and just try and have a look at the, the user experience flow, um, how the and how the basic the uh, monetizing kind of um, economy works, and and how developers are looking to encourage people or incentivize people to to start um, spending money or uh, signing up with Facebook and such things. So uh, the game we're going to look at. Um, now is um, Freak Tower, which is uh, interesting, if only because it's from Japanese developer Gung Ho, which is obviously uh, had a had a very good last uh, 12 months with Puzzle and Dragons, which is the top-grossing game in the world um, at the moment, um, kind of vying up there with uh, with Clash of Clans and uh, Ca uh, Candy Crush Saga. So this is their new one, it uh, came out in Japan, um, previously came out in the West um, a couple of weeks ago. So let's fire that up and see what we can learn from uh, Gung Ho and their success. Start the stopwatch. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. That's unusual to have a, an IP and in-app purchase warning. The only games that I've previously seen that on are uh, Heyday, and uh, some of the some of the Game Loft games do it, but not not as a uh, initial splash screen. So, having a little uh, interruption to the game, my tower. Hmm. I'm sure there's some some loading stuff in the background. Okay, so we're straight into the game. Oh snap, the monster we beat is back. The, uh, let's obliterate the monster. Start the monster machine tutorial. Sounds good. So there's our tower. Ready, what am I doing? Okay, I'm not doing anything. Defeat the monster before it reaches the roof of your tower. So these monsters, are, these guys are throwing stuff at the monster. Freaks will automatically attack the monster. You can drop four different items, okay, to interrupt the monster. So where I've got my items at the bottom of the screen here. I assume bombard him with a flower pot. The flower pot consumes 20 arm power, so uh, that's obviously going to be a bit of currency thing. So we'll drop him. Come on in. Okay, so just tap it and it knocks it onto the uh, monster octopus's head. How do I... How do I shop net? No, we about drop the net. Okay. So the net consumes four arm power, so it's double. That's slowing down. Getting the pounding. How about we try a poison? Okay. There's a purple haze over him. This one dropped the bomb. You can use it. You can use any hunting item as long as you have enough arm power. Oh, bomb consumes six arm power. Where's my? How do I see my arm power then? That's my arm power here, presumably. Yeah. So the arm power's just gone down there, but obviously you can see it's slowly building up over time. There's my arm. Did you get there? I think you got there. So nothing like so that's a, it's a. I always think this is interesting in, in tutorials where um, basically you can't win. It's a. It's a. It's nothing. No skill. There's no nothing you can do in skill wise that is going to stop you failing. Which um, I think it can be very effective. Can also annoy people. Um, <laughs> and I guess you, in this case, whoopsie, they've made it a bit. You know, the whole thing's quite a joke. Um, so you don't really feel like you've been cheated in any way or made to look stupid. Um, but that's fine, we're going to rebuild a tower, so it's a good starting point. The whole point of Freak Tower is to establish star plus star times 10 tower while managing your freaks and hunting pesky monsters. Sounds good. Let's start by managing the tower. In order to get a higher rank, you have to have the highest tower tap build floor. Okay. Freaks need somewhere to live, tap apartment. You've got a one jewel bonus. So jewels are going to be useful, I'm sure. It takes five minutes to use jewels to shorten the shopping time. So what am I supposed to be pressing there? Okay, finish construction with one of my jewels. Yes. 
So this is obviously using um, some of the game mechanics we've seen from Tiny Tower and some of those other kind of tower games that were more Sims. This is mixing those things up. Oh, I'll do it again, am I? Apartments have five rooms, so it's a freaked. You can add freaks using jewels. What kind of freaks will move in? Tap add randomly. So I'm spending these jewels fairly quickly. I've got given two, they've gone already. Uh, sweep, my first freaks arrived. The icon of other freaks head represents its mood. Okay, so I'm going to be kind of I guess, managing my freaks to make sure they're in a good mood to attack monsters that are trying to destroy my uh, tower. I'm going to do some business. Okay, oh, build a floor again. Four different types of commercial floors. Okay, restaurant. So I get one for making it, and then I'm going to have to spend it <laughs> to uh, finish it quicker. Burger joints added to my tower. Let's move this sucker. Let's hire that sucker that just moved in. Okay, so he's in the apartment now. This is a very tiny tower. Um, it seems this freak is unemployed. Uh, okay. So this is freaks have diff like to work in different ways. Different kind of business. Yeah, it's all tiny tower. Job. Burger joint. He's a burger flipping master. Okay. Tap the burger joint. Stock, wait, sell goods, collect coins, tap and stock. Burger set six, tap and set stock. That's going to cost the jewel. Oh, it's got more jewels. Yeah. Not bad. It's going to sell burgers. Customer will buy your junk. So, get rid of my burgers. Slot machine. You've got to play the slot machine to add freaks. That's random, isn't it? A visitor will become a freak when visiting the apartment floor, since it's absolutely free. Keep playing as much as you want, that's all there is to it. Mm. Let's try a bit harder to hire more freaks. Mm, make more freaks move in, we need three. Hire, hire them at the burger joint. So I have to play the slot machine, which doesn't seem to give me anything. It gives me a different type of freak. So, okay, they're unemployed. I'm getting a job at the burger joint. Hello. I'm in the burger joint. Uh, unemployed. In the burger joint. Great, finish tutorial. Build up to seventh floor for the next challenge. How much time is now available? That's it, okay. I've got ten jewels finishing the tutorial. That's pretty good. So, hard currency, soft currency. There's coins. Loud, isn't it? Let's turn it up. Okay, hmm. Oh, what's that? Add pet? Add pet? Okay, I don't know about that. What that is. Okay, so there's this chap's joint. Okay, so I can get five up to here. Can he work in a burger joint? Or is burger joint full? No, burger joint's full now. Okay. Okay, so we're kind of getting to see what's going on with this game. So it's, uh, as I said, it's a um, tiny tower building sim with this extra kind of monster attacking kind of situation going on. So this is what they're all doing, they're making... Okay, don't worry about that. Build another floor. That's 150 of those. What have I got? Shall I build... Retail. Let's check this. Okay, so let's build 10 floors to complete the goal to get 10 jewels. Okay, so it's kind of suggesting. Kind of hints what to do. Okay, so we kind of get the idea what's going on here. So let's have just a quick look. I um, always like to see. I mean, actually, as a game, this is a very simple UI. I mean, there's not, there's not the tower itself is the kind of UI, and everything else is kind of built into it. Um, Let's see if we can go to a store. Okay. Ah, oh, okay, so this is interesting. So we clicked on the hard currency, the jewels. It says, please read our terms terms of service for purchasing jewels. Clicking on yes button, you'll read the terms. Um, so I guess that's kind of um, making sure they're kind of adding an extra, extra safeguard in if people say they've, they've bought things by mistake or their children have. 
<laughs> it asked me again, so that's good. Well done, Gung Ho. Okay, so three times. That's this is the most I've ever seen stopping in-app purchases. And even more interesting is that um, okay, so we've got a lot of games have six um, bands of transactions. This has only got five. The reason it's only got five is it's limited. It's the um, in-app tra in-app transaction maximum transaction to twenty-one pounds, which I guess is going to come out about. So that's going to come out at like $35 maybe. And obviously, pretty much in every other game you've seen these days, the maximum is $99.99 or uh, £70, which is the maximum that Apple allow. So going over, obviously, <laughs> you could be cynical and say they're making so much money off, off Puzzle and Dragons, they um, um, don't need to, <laughs> to make so much money off this one. Um, but that's, I mean, that is quite a statement. Obviously, we've kind of seen the process of when we launched the game it said it uses in-app purchases, when we even said we want to buy in-app purchases we had to click on the button three times, I mean that's the um, uh, pretty kind of controlled situation it's taking people through who want to spend money. Um, but in a sense maybe you know that shows it thinks it's got a really good game and it thinks it's going to make money off it but it's really making sure it doesn't get those kind of kind of refund um, kind of calls from Apple or people complaining to its support kind of centre and stuff. So um, and it's even limiting. So even if you spend the most amount of money, you're not um, spending what some people might see, see as ridiculous amounts of money. Um, so that's interesting. Presumably, can we buy these? No. No, we can. No, no. Hmm. That's the pet one. Um, no, it doesn't want to do that. So can we buy those? What's that? One do? Okay, so okay, so here we go. Oh, so so I purchased jewels and then I exchange to coins there. Now I'm going to see what's going on. Do that social networks. The slot machine. Add a pay line. Okay, so it's, so that's an interesting monetization option. I mean, hundred. And that, that, means, that means you you can start hiring more freaks as you go. So it's a bit like um, often we see now um, a sort of doubler. So any experiences, I think his first jetpack joy was one of the first games to show that where you spend I think it was like three dollars and every coin you collected was doubled up. So you're kind of seeing this kind of perma permanent item. Which if you can play this game a lot, okay, there's no way you, you have to spend hard money, you have to spend real money to buy it, but it's, it's pretty much going to speed up. Um, an important aspect of the game. Oh, I can upgrade my arm. But presumably that will be okay. Oh, so, so we're kind of seeing what other things we can spend. Jewels on, so this will be upgraded my bomb to level one. Hopefully, this get this will get these numbers will get higher as you're upgrading them more and more and more. Good. So that's uh, yeah, that's Freaktail. Very uh, good. I think opening experience. Something you developers should be uh, should be playing to see um, how it's encouraging kind of easy use, easy usage. Get people up to the into the game quickly. It's not forcing you to spend any money. I guess the other thing we'll be looking at is uh, in our charticle is um, how well the game actually does. That's the the bottom line. You can have a very nice opening experience, but if you're not um, actually you, generating kind of money from it then probably um it's not the kind of game that's going to be supported for a long period of time but anyway that's uh that's freaktown